How's it going, you guys? It is another Q&A, and before you ask, yes, this video is being posted on a Monday, and there will still be five other videos. So this is going to be something that I do kind of as I notice um, a lot of repeat questions or some really good questions coming in throughout the week. So my plan is Mondays will possibly be a Q&A. Depending on how busy my week was, I would like to start doing those um, pretty much every Monday just so I can get some of your guys' questions answered. Um, I figure I have time to sit down and film a video, but it's super time consuming to like sit there and type out all of the responses to questions. And this will probably help answer some other people's questions that they have that might be the exact same. So I think Mondays now is going to be Q&As and then regular video posting schedule will continue to be Tuesday through Saturday and no videos on Sundays. So we are going to just go ahead and jump right into this. Um, as you guys notice, I am in a sweatshirt. I have my phone here to pull up all your guys' questions. Uh, the weather has been so weird. We just got so much rain and it's a little bit windy right now. <laughs> um, but we are going to just jump into this. We had five videos out last week and one of them was the Q&A. So there was only four other videos. Um, but first video that we did was the Q&A. Second video was the planting fall veggies. The third video was the end of September garden tour. And then we did adding our first boxwoods to the garden and then proven winner mangave. So it was a busy week. There was a lot of stuff done. The garden tour, <laughs> that was a long video. Okay, so we are gonna jump into first questions. That was from the Q&A video. There were a lot of questions, <laughs> but I'm just gonna pick up just a few of them really quickly. First question is from Peonies and Pinks. And they had said, what do you do with all of the pictures that you take every year? How do you organize? I may or may not have over 10,000 pictures just from this year. That is insane, <laughs> but very good for <laughs> documenting. Um, I, I mean, everything that I do gets uploaded to YouTube. And so that's how I keep organized is by my YouTube channel. And then everything actually goes into a file. So if I was in your shoes and I had like that many photos, I would probably on my computer, I would make a file for each and every single month. And in that month, that's where all of those photos would be organized by is by that. We do it by um, the video. I do all of the like unedited footage goes into a file and then the edited video goes into a whole separate file. So if I was you, I would probably on the computer, everything would be organized in files by the month. And then after that year is over, take all of those files and put them into one file labeled for the year. So that way you could go back for the year and you could see each month as things progress. I think that that would actually be really cool. The next question is from Lynn and she had said that amaranth is amazing. Do they all get that large? Is there a dwarf version? I love your videos. They're not only informative, but inspiring. Thanks Lynn. Um, so that amaranth behind me in that video was the Love Lies Bleeding and it is a fairly large amaranth. All of the tassel amaranth, the ones that hang like that, do get that large. Um, I also saw a few questions about needing to stake it and starting from seed. Those ones are staked and they do need to be started from seed. Um, you might be able to find them in a garden center, but the seeds are so cheap. I actually ended up, was it last year, last fall, I ended up giving away, I don't know, 50 packets of the Love Lies Bleeding and Emerald Tassel Amaranth um, because they grew so well for me last year. But they do have other ones. They have some that are a spike form, so they don't like drape down. They just kind of like come up to a point. Um, those are also really pretty, but I do prefer the Love Lies Bleeding and they're really, really easy to start from seed. I actually just take the seeds because they're really tiny and I sprinkle them in a tray. And then I just separate the seedlings as they need to be separated. The next question is from Judy McCaro, and she had asked if we had a basement. She said, just curious, do you have a basement? If so, maybe you can move your seed starting equipment down there. Um, and we do have, a, it's not a basement, it is a root cellar. Um, I called it a basement in a video a while ago, and uh, I got called out because I called it a basement, and it's not a basement, it's a root cellar. So it is a root cellar. It's tiny and we actually do store like all of our camping stuff and our Halloween and Christmas decorations and things that we don't use that often because we try not to go down there. It's tiny. It's kind of damp. Um, it's not somewhere I want to be. 
So, and the door to open that is really, really heavy. Um, honestly, I'd prefer if it was just gone because I would like to put French doors right there and have that be like a patio that you walk out into. I think that that would be really pretty, um, especially way better than an ugly door. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we have a root cellar. We're going to move really quick because the lighting is really bad on my face. The next question on that video was from Pasta and Pearls. I love that name. <laughs> Um, she had said, I adore your lion fountain. Do you have a link for that? I've been searching online and I can't find that exact one. I do not have a link to that. You guys are actually going to see later on in the week, kind of a surprise about it. Um, but I don't have a link to that one. I found it locally. It's from a company called Dos Amigo Statuary here locally in town. Um, but unfortunately he is going to be closing his business. So, um, and I, I, yeah, sorry. I don't have a link to that one. Um, it is a really pretty fountain and I, I did pay $500 for it. So I think for how big it was, it was actually a pretty good deal. Um, but no link. Sorry. Okay. And I'm probably going to butcher the name on this last one. Um, a bearing, a bearing. I'm sorry. Um, she said, I love these Q and A videos. Does commenting help your YouTube money more than just liking the video? I always like the YouTube video, but I thought commenting helped more in helping out monetarily. And um, no, <laughs> it's uh, YouTube, the way YouTube works is so crazy. So commenting doesn't actually help. Um, I don't think liking even helps. The biggest thing is the view duration. So watching the entire video is what helps me the most. But I know that it's an extra step for people to comment on videos. And it's not something that I normally do. So I just thought that just to show appreciation, because I know that there are so many of you guys watching the video, liking the video and commenting on the videos that I would just do a little something extra for you guys that are, you know, taking a few extra seconds out of your time to leave a comment. Um, so no, it actually doesn't help me <laughs> monetarily commenting, but I just enjoy it so much. I enjoy your guys' comments and the banter that goes back in between comments and all the information that a lot of you guys do provide in the comment section. Okay, and I think we're moving on to the next video now. The next video was planting my fall vegetable garden. And the first question is from Christine Peterson and she had said, I absolutely adore that metal scroll piece on the chicken coop. Where did you find that? I found that about six, seven years ago, probably seven years ago. And it's actually like an indoor wall metal piece. And I think I got it from like Ross or TJ Maxx or something like that. And um, it's supposed to go inside the house on the wall. And when we moved here, we don't have wall space and it just kind of didn't really fit the style of inside of our house. And so on the chicken coop it went. <laughs> and I actually really like it there. I think it was like 12 bucks, but that was so many years ago. The next question, it's kind of a long one. It's from Victoria and um, it's actually the last question. There weren't many questions. But there were a lot of comments on that video. Um, next question is from Victoria. She had said, they say necessity is the mother of invention. And man, you definitely invented out of necessity for shade. Yes, I did. It was kind of crazy. What is the temperature range in your area for fall planting? Everything seems to grow wonderfully in California. Yeah, so I'm in zone 9A and so our... 9A is 20 to 25 degrees. The USDA growing zone goes in ranges of 10 degrees. And so usually the coldest that we get is 20 degrees, but I don't think I've seen that happen in a very, very long time. Usually we stay above 32 degrees um, with the occasional night that might hit 32 degrees. Um, last year we had, I think probably like 10 nights that hit 32 degrees. And the year before that, we actually only had one night that hit 32 degrees. So even 32 degrees is pretty rare for us. Um, that's kind of why I don't really go off the USDA zones so much. California, Oregon, Washington, Nevada, um, and a few other states have what's called a sunset zone. And for those of us that are in the West Coast, um, the USDA growing zone isn't very helpful because I'm zone nine and also like you go very south and it's zone nine. Um, I think Washington, part of Washington is zone nine. Most of Oregon is zone, like the coastline of Oregon is zone nine. And so it's, it's so different. Um, the USDA growing zones for us over here isn't very helpful. So I use the 
sunset zone as often as I can and I'm also zone nine for the sunset zone. So we don't get very cold here. Um, it says that we can get down to 20 degrees, but that never happens. So that's winter time for us. And then during the fall, like this time of year, we it's so crazy. We are in the like 70s right now. And then next week we'll be in the 90s. We really don't cool down. I mean, for us, like I'm how how cold is it today? It's it's 77 is the high today. It's 69 degrees out and I'm in a sweatshirt. And that's what we'll be for the next few days. And then we're gonna jump into the 90s and then we'll cool back down. Um, it's actually very pleasant here in the fall time. <laughs> So our fall plants, sometimes they actually bolt because we will have random days in the fall that'll hit 80, 90 degrees. Um, but for the most part, it's usually about 70 degrees for us in the fall. Next video is the end of September garden tour. That video did not do as well as I thought it was going to do. <laughs> um, that's all right, though. It it was kind of a weird week on YouTube, and I was actually noticing that from a few other creators also. Um, Jess from Roots and Refuge, she had talked about that, and I was noticing on Janie's channel it was kind of a weird week. I think it was a weird week on YouTube, so we'll see how this week goes. Um, but yeah, it did not perform the way I thought that a garden tour should perform. Usually garden tours perform very, very well, and this one was a bust. But that's all right. There was a lot of comments going on in the video. Um, YouTube was just being weird this week. The first question is from Minerva Martinez, and they had said, your garden is beautiful. I have a question. Do you have water irrigation in your flower beds? If not, do you handheld water? We have irrigation in every single bed on our garden. Um, we get way too hot to not have irrigation, and our irrigation goes off twice a day in the growing season. Um, right now it's going off about once a day, and everything, every single plant has irrigation next to it. There's no way I could keep up with hand watering. I would be out here every day for hours there's way too much out here but yeah everything is on irrigation and it's on its own, own timer own grow own zone so it's all taken care of by itself so there's it's really nice because there's days that I don't come out to the garden especially like in the summertime when I get home and it's 110 out I'm like yeah I'm not going outside so um I don't I don't have to the next question that I saw was from Gwen and she had said do you put your mahogany splendor hibiscus cuttings in the water or soil. So I had talked about in that video how mahogany splendor is really easy to propagate and um, that's how I've been growing it the last couple years from propagations. And I take little cuttings from it. I actually take long cuttings. I take them about this long. I pop off all the leaves except for a few of them and then they just go in a vase. And I'll usually do about 10 cuttings per vase and I just let them root in the water in a windowsill where they get um, they actually get a lot of sunlight, like very direct sunlight, and they root really, really quickly. Um, usually within like two weeks, I have little tiny roots starting to form on them. And then once the roots reach about like an inch or so, maybe two inches long, then I put them in soil and I will winter them over um, under some grow lights. Really, really pretty plant, really easy to grow. The next question that I saw came from Donna, and she had said, do you mean saguara cypress? Sorry, I struggle to find evergreens that survive in our heat. It is a Weissel's Cigaro Cypress, and it's a really, really cool plant. Um, very narrow. It gets about two feet wide and eight to 10 feet tall. So like perfect little evergreen to just like tuck into places. And it is zones five through nine. Ours is about three years old at this point. So it's doing really, really well. I think I have to move again. We're gonna move really quick. All right, we've moved. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what's going up the lighting today, but it was not great behind the willow. So now we're in front of the aviary. The next question is from Lynn and she had said, would you ever consider growing more native plants? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think next year I would like to get into growing some more natives. Um, there's not really a whole lot of California natives that I absolutely love, but I do have a few in mind that I would like to add. Um, I also need to do more research on it, but there are definitely a few that I would really like to add to the garden. Um, I think adding a few natives in is always a really good idea. The next question is from Deborah, and she had asked, how big is your property? We are on just under a quarter of an acre, and all of our property is in the very back of our house. Um, the front of our property is teeny tiny. Our property is like 12 feet deep in the front and then our property is it's 50 feet wide so in the front it's like 50 feet wide by 12 feet deep the back is 
50 by like maybe 125. So it's really not all that big. I've run out of space very quickly here. When we first moved here, it was really funny because we were like, oh my gosh, there's so much room here. We can do all of the things. I thought that we'd have room for like animals and like livestock. No, not even close. <laughs> Next question is from XS8372. And they had said, wouldn't it be a good investment to hire someone to cut off the branches of your neighbor's tree that go over your property? I think it might save you so many headaches. Yes, um, we've, well, we've already removed a ton of the branches that hung over and we will be removing the privet tree and the, when we have them come out to remove that, I'll probably ask them about removing some of those trees. But honestly, the pecan tree grows so fast. Every single year, we are removing branches from that tree that hang over. And so it would be something that we would have to invest in every single year. And honestly, I think I'm just going to work on being more preventative about the, I keep looking at it because it's just a really annoying tree. But um, I think we're going to work on being more preventative about the tree. Instead of waiting until there's a problem, we're going to take like action beforehand. So that way we're not having to worry about um, all of the aphids. I think that that'll be really helpful is to be preventative. So we're going to do that next year. And I will limb up some more of those branches. Next one that we did was the adding our first boxwoods into the garden. And there were only a few questions on that one. Freya, what is your problem? She is wonderful. Okay, first question is from Victoria Young. And she said... Um, excellent choice for those pots. Where is your garden wand from? And I get that question every time that I use it. I will, I link everything in the description down below. And if you don't know how to find it, you just hit the button that says more, and then you hit more again. And it has all of the links for absolutely everything. That watering wand is from Terrain. And I think I talked about it in the last Q&A also. Um, it's an investment piece. It's over a hundred dollars. It's solid brass and it's by Haas. <laughs> for Rhea. Um, but it is something that I absolutely love. The next question is from Jay and they had said, I was thinking of adding a couple boxwoods in pots. I want to try a topiary spiral. Is there a specific boxwood I should try for that? Well, Jay, I actually have a boxwood spiral right here. So this one is from Monrovia and Monrovia knows what they're doing when it comes to boxwoods and the spiral and topiary of any sort. They do amazing job at all of their topiary. This one is probably about four or five years old as it is. I was watching a thing that they had actually just posted a couple of days ago on Instagram talking about how many years it takes them to get to something this size and the training and the thought and the craftsmanship that goes into it. It's beautiful. I, I love this thing. It's still, I bought this in April. It is still in its container because I'm so nervous to plant it um, because it was an investment piece. I paid $175. It's a lot of money for one plant, but it's a seven year old topiary and it's already in spiral form. Um, and you don't have to buy it already spiraled. You could start much cheaper. And this is a green mountain boxwood. So if you're gonna do it, this is what they're using is green mountain. Buy a green mountain, grow it on, start shaping it. First year, it's gonna be rough. Second year, you'll start to get some of the shape. And then the third year, you should probably have something if you're buying something that's already a good size for topiary. They know what they're doing. They have done a beautiful job at this. And it's already, it's got some new growth coming out. I don't know if you guys can even see all of this green right here. That's all new growth being pushed. And I need to come in and like shape it a little more, continue to trim on it boxwoods, especially in like spiral or topiary form, do so much better with lots of pruning. So this is my spiral and I would do the exact same thing if you're doing it, Green Mountain Boxwood. That's the one that you wanna choose. Next question is another one from Judy. I told you guys a while ago, she comments on every single video um, and usually with questions. So Judy Macaro had said, did your giant calla lily bloom this year for you? Mine did not, um, but I bought it in the spring. So we did get blooms from them. They're actually right next to me. Um, we did get blooms and then we got so hot and I think that they got too much sun and we hit 113 for 
like a week and a half straight and a lot of things suffered. A lot of things actually ended up dying around the property. It was a really hard time for me to be in the garden. They died and they've actually just shot back some new growth. You guys saw that in the in this video, the boxwood video. And um, so all of that growth is very new just in the last couple of months. I don't think we'll get any more blooms this year, but yeah, we did get blooms and these guys were planted the year before. So they're going on to their second year now. Okay, in the last video, I just pulled three questions really quick from this. And um, this was the Mengave video and it was i'm excited about it like i said there's a few more that i really want to try on the property especially that bad hair day one i still laugh at it when i see the photo of it <laughs> i'll pop that photo back up in case you guys missed it that was such a it was a really cool video i learned a lot about a plant that i had never even really heard about um it's a cross between two plants and so i'm i was excited about it so Three questions really quick. First one is from Darlene and she had said, you inspired me to think about growing them. Did you say that they were deer resistant? Yes, they are deer resistant. Um, does not, deer resistant does not mean deer proof. It just means that they would prefer a lot of other things before they would prefer to eat that plant, but deer will still eat pretty much anything. So um, deer resistant just means they're gonna go for everything else first and if there's no other options, then they will probably eat that. But they are deer resistant. Um, so if you do have a problem with deer in your property, eating a bunch of other things, you really shouldn't have to worry about them eating those. And like I said, there's a whole bunch of different varieties. Definitely check those other ones out. The next question is from Spartan Knoll, and they had said, where is the container from? It is a Campania. I think I paid like $130 for it locally. I will link it down below. I haven't been able to find it online for sale but i will link it to the campania website and you could ask your local nurseries to bring the campania line in um they have some really pretty stuff that's where i also got my square fountain that's on our front porch that i got for um way cheaper than what it goes for online so um, i will link that in the video down below in the description hit the more button hit it again and it'll be right there and the last question is from nc flower girl and she had said what is the white flower blowing behind you the white flower blowing behind me that was i believe you're talking about the white chiffon rose of sharon that has been a really really pretty plant um it's by proven winners the white chiffon it's like a doubled flower so it's got like the like hibiscus looking blooms on the outside and then it has like a little inside cup of flowers also it's really really pretty plant it's done really well for us it's a full sun lover um i think i've talked about it in a few other videos but yeah white chiffon rose of sharon definitely a one to grow in the garden um, i would like to grow it again but maybe in a different location somewhere that it gets like full full sun so that way it's like super full i think once we remove the privet tree though it'll be absolutely amazing the thing blooms from mid spring to first frost, um, which is really nice, especially most hibiscus, they don't really bloom until much later in the season. So white chiffon rose of Sharon. Okay, that was a lot <laughs> uh, and a lot of moving. <laughs> So I think that that is going to be it for this video, you guys. We got a lot done on the property this week, and there's a lot to come next week. And some very, or this week, actually, you guys will be seeing this. Uh, I'm filming it Sunday, and you guys are going to see it tomorrow morning. Um, so I'm really excited for this week's videos. There's going to be some really, really good ones, and I think that you guys um, will enjoy them. So I will see you all tomorrow in the next video. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.